By now we know that the Nintendo Switch doesn't have a virtual console and isn't going to get one. It was scrapped to make way for the NES Classic titles that come with your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. And now, thanks to some rumors and data mining, we're pretty sure that there's gonna be some SNES Classic games on there too. But there's no need to cry, and there's no need to wait for Nintendo to ramp up their service either. These publishers sure didn't. They released their classic games on their own, right on the eShop. And there's a surprising amount of retro games to be found already. You just need to know where to look. What exactly is a retro game? Well, I consider anything prior to current gen to be retro. So if it's a current gen console, it's currently in my setup. And if it's a retro console, it's behind me in one of these shelves over here. So retro, current gen. A lot of people are afraid to call their Xbox 360 retro because it only feels like just yesterday. But there are a lot of people out there in the world right now who are playing Fortnite who weren't even born when the Xbox 360 was considered current gen. You're old. Just accept it like the rest of us. However, if we went by that logic, then Skyrim would be considered retro. So for the purposes of this video, we'll be talking about things that are clearly retro. Things that are from the 32-bit era or prior. That way there'll be no fighting in the comments, right? Some publishers release their titles piecemeal, so you can just buy the individual titles. But some of the bigger name titles are released in collections, like for example, Sega, with the biggest collection on this list, the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. I was a Sega Genesis kid, so there's a lot here that appeals to me. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, which are of course the most easily recognizable. Comics Zone, a brutally hard side-scrolling beat-em-up where you fight your way through the pages of a comic book. All three of the Golden Axe games, a multiplayer medieval fantasy beat-em-up. Gunstar Heroes, which is a fantastic Contra-like shooter that allows you to mix abilities to create unique weapon types. Fantasy Star, Sega's version of Final Fantasy. The Shinobi games, which include Shinobi 3, which might be my favorite game on here and probably my favorite ninja game of all time, period. Vector Man, which is an often overlooked but fantastic side-scrolling shooter. All of the Streets of Rage games, the quintessential beat-em-up. And there are a lot more games. There are 53 in total, which is insane, and the collection is only $30. I think this collection also has one of the best quick save and quick load features. You access it by holding the right stick up or down. It's great because holding it prevents accidental inputs. So you don't run into situations like this. Oh no! Oh no. <laughs> No! I hit quick load. It was it was mapped to R. <laughs> Using a 90s kid's bedroom as a means of navigation is a creative way to take you back. This might just be my favorite collection on this list. So uh, keep your expectations low from here on because it's all downhill. It's unfortunate that the best Sega Genesis games, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles are absent here, but we should probably just take what we can get. It's still a great collection. In addition to this collection, Sega also has another collection they call the Sega Ages Collection, which provides a select few titles that you can purchase individually. The first Sonic the Hedgehog was the first game released for this. The Sega Ages version of Sonic the Hedgehog is different than the Sega Genesis Classics version because it includes the Spin Dash ability, which I don't know the last time you played the original Sonic, but the spin dash has always been glaringly absent. So the inclusion of this is very welcome and worth the additional purchase. They've also included the drop dash from Sonic Mania, which is a nice touch. Both abilities are removable if you wanna play the game in its original form, but I encourage you not to. Other games out right now include Thunder Force 4, the original Fantasy Star for the Master System, and Outrun. None of those games are in the Sega Genesis Classics collection. There are more games to come, like Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Space Harrier, and Poyo Poyo. I think we can expect all of these games to have additional modifications as well. There was a lot of press around the Mega Man Legacy collections when they came to the Switch, so you probably already know that those exist. The first one includes Mega Man 1 through 6, and the second one includes Mega Man 7 through 10. You know what I like a little more than Mega Man, though? Mega Man X. 
The Mega Man X Legacy Collection includes X 1 through 4, and the second one includes X 5 through 8. If you're a Mega Man fan, these are all great collections. It's the only way to get these games on the Switch, and it's great having them in this form factor. If you're not a Mega Man fan, you owe it to yourself to at least play Mega Man X 1. And if you get frustrated, Chill Penguin, then Smart Bandrill, then Armor and Armadillo, then Launch Octopus, then Boomer Quanger, then Stink Chameleon, then Storm Eagle, then Flame Mammoth, and you're welcome. The only thing that bothered me about this collection is that the buttons to navigate the menus of the collection are different than the buttons to navigate the individual games menus. Even when you go to save the game inside of one of the games, which is an additional feature added by the collection, it's different than the rest of the game's menus. This is a very minor thing, it's not that big of a deal, but I hate when UIs are all weird. Just make it easy for us, that's your only job. As a port of an old game or as a collection of old games, your only job is to make the UI nice. That's the only difference. Will also reminded me that there's the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. It includes 20 games that I've literally never heard of before. Not a single one. Wait, Alpha Mission? Nope, not, never mind, not that one either. The last collection here is the Namco Museum Collection. It has 10 classic Namco arcade titles. Stuff like Dig Dug, Pac-Man, Galaga, Splatterhouse, and Rolling Thunder, which I find to be a hysterical arcade game for some reason. This isn't exactly the best collection of retro games, and the biggest titles here are easily accessible to play elsewhere, but, it's there. It's $30. I'd say if you've never played any of these games before, you should definitely play Pac-Man. What the hell's wrong with you? But play it some other way. Save your $30 and maybe spend it on the Sega Genesis Classics collection. There are three other collections or umbrellas of games that allow you to purchase the games individually. There are a lot of games to choose from. However, there are a lot of very bad ones. Johnny Turbo has games like Super Burger Time, Joe and Mac Caveman Ninja, also Sly Spy, Two Crude Dudes, and of course, Bad Dudes. So in case you were really clamoring for a way to play Bad Dudes, now's your time. When Hamster Co. found out that there might not be a traditional virtual console on the Switch, they went ham. <coughs> and released basically their whole library for the Switch. They have an absolute onslaught of Neo Geo games. Games like Metal Slug, Puzzle Bobble, Pulse Star, King of Fighters, Fatal Fury. There's a lot here, but there's also a lot of crap, so good thing it's piecemeal. Perhaps my least favorite collection of games are the Arcade Archive collection of games. The first title they released was Versus Super Mario Brothers, which might sound like regular old Super Mario Brothers, but it's not. It's the slightly altered, much harder arcade version. It's also a terrible port. There's input lag, and the buttons to insert coins and start the actual game are completely unintuitive. Otherwise, it's pretty much identical to the Neo Geo ports. This game was at the top of the eShop sales charts for a long time, which is really sad because that just means that people thought that it was the original Super Mario Brothers, not some trashy cash grab. We have a whole backlog episode on this, so I'm done talking about it. But they have other arcade games too. Like for example, the arcade version of Double Dragon, Punch-Out, Mario Brothers, and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is actually a big deal because this is the first time the arcade version has ever been re-released for another platform. It's usually just the NES version, but this version includes an additional level that the NES version doesn't have. Plus, it's faithful to its vertical aspect ratio. And this Switch port allows you to rotate the Switch while in tabletop mode to play vertically. Punch-Out actually has this too, it's a neat feature. Of course, the NES version comes for free with your Nintendo Switch Online subscription, so Purchasing this version depends on how faithful you want to be to the original release. Switch Online gets a lot of crap for all different reasons. Like for example, it's horrible voice chat. Every time Nintendo talks about it, the like to dislike ratio is telling. Hell, every time I talk about it, people throw out dislikes. 
But I think that the NES games that come with Nintendo Switch Online are a welcome inclusion. And the fact that they release more games for this service every month makes me consider it as the best retro games collection in terms of value and continued support. If the rumors are true, we have a lot to look forward to with these SNES classic games that should be making it to Switch Online very soon. Just like the NES games though, you can expect a lot of third party stuff to be absent. Like, don't expect Mega Man X. If you want that, just get the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. I'm personally just a little bit disappointed that Nintendo's collection isn't bigger. Like, why don't we have N64 games? Why don't we have GameCube games? You certainly have the capability, but I'm confident Nintendo will make things right slowly but surely. We already have all of these great NES games. For now, in lieu of the Virtual Console, you can enjoy all these other great retro games. See? Life without Virtual Console ain't so bad. What do you guys think about the Switch's collection of retro games. It's easy to overlook because there isn't a section in the eShop for classic games. There isn't like a virtual console tab and people are really harping on that messaging, that, that title of virtual console, that name. But it's done with, it's over, you gotta let that go. We are now going to have a service with NES and SNES games slapped in there for better or for worse. But to fill in the gaps that Nintendo doesn't give you, you got stuff like the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. You got the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. All the stuff I just talked about. Anyway, what do you guys think about the state of classic games on the Nintendo Switch? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. As always, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Schedule is over on a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We got Wolf Den Live here every Wednesday, now at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Gameplay streams on Sundays here on YouTube and then over on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I've been playing a lot of Smash Brothers. I'm having a lot of fun. You can support us by becoming a member here on YouTube or over on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den using Twitch Prime. Help us out. It helps us a lot. If you have Amazon Prime, it's a free subscription. And if you support us and go to our Discord, you get access to the supporter-only Discord where we post videos like this early for supporters. Plus, we play games with supporters once a month. But of course, the most important thing you can do to help us out is just subscribe to the channel. That's it, it's one button. And share this video with a friend, a friend who's into the retro stuff and of course, has a Nintendo Switch. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good week.